Hi, I'm Heimbach, and good to have you back. In my line of work as a composer for the stage and the screen, I work with strict deadlines. I sometimes have to write a song overnight and rehearse it the next day, or I have to redo a crucial piece of music while everybody's on their cigarette break. This has taught me to avoid writer's block at all costs. I come from the piano, and it's often my first choice for anything that I have to score. But when you are on the piano and you have to write a lot, muscle memory might kick in and you might fall back into old ideas, at least I do. And to avoid that, I find that experimentation helps a lot. Experimentation gives me new ideas, fresh perspectives, which are all good in avoiding writer's block. So I was more than happy when Coma Electronic asked me to beta test the new sensor modules they were developing for the field kit. First of all, I'm not getting paid for this. We are friends and I make music with Wouter of Coma Electronic as odd narrative. I've been using the field kit a lot. I was backer number four on their Kickstarter and ever since then it's been a crucial part of my setup, especially when I travel. It's the one piece of kit that I can recommend without reservation to anybody starting out with experimental music and that includes also the field kit effects. But there's one section on the field kit that I've never used and that is the sensor section. There are two reasons for that. First of all, I didn't have much time to dive into which sensors would work, buy an Arduino pack, try them all out and have doubtful musical results. Because I was not sure, which is the second reason, if a heat sensor, for example, would anything valuable to my music. But I was wrong in that regard. So now that the sensors are here, let's have a closer look. We can divide the sensors into two different groups, analog and digital. On the analog side, we have a force sensitive resistor and a soft pot. We've got a light sensor, we've got a small microphone, we've got a heat sensor, we've got this switch thing, which is just a simple switch, and we've got two ball sensors. On the digital side, we've got an accelerometer, a capacitive touch interface, and the most powerful module of them all, the random source, which is actually three modules in one. But more on that later. You plug the sensors into one of the two sections on the field kit. The lower section is for continuous control voltage signals, and the upper section is for triggers. So what you do is you take this cable and you've got three different pins and I always use the red for down which is probably ground I think G here so I put it also in this way and then you're already ready to go you will need to adjust the settings for each sensor which will take a bit of time and if you're planning on using many sensors live I would suggest making careful notes. Now in this video I don't want to get too caught up in the technical details how you program them, how you set them up. I want to show you how you can make music with them. Also these are still on better so some things might change and might not be applicable to the final versions. Let's start with the analog modules and then move up to the more complex digital ones. The light sensor. The light sensor is as much fun as your light source. Here I'm using a bicycle lamp to open the filter on the Roland SE02 and modulate a bunch of effects on the field kit effects. That is a pretty simple application. But if you have a light that flickers, you can use it to create rhythms. Here it pings and thus excites the frequency shifter on the field kit effects, as well as the delay, which creates this beautiful percussion sounds. The soft pot. You might have seen ribbon controllers on synthesizers. My first synthesizer, the Roland GP8000, had one and I love playing it. It gives you an extra level of control that feels more musical than a knob 
especially on something as tiny as the SAO2. It's much more fun to control the cutoff with something that is this playable. And with the field kit, you have a DC interface, which enables control of a motor. For example, as in this Walkman. You can mod these yourself, Google Pitch Mod Walkman, and then use the ribbon controller and the field kit and the Walkman as a monophonic Mellotron. It's a simple, tiny microphone, which comes in useful in many situations. For example, here I'm using it to create feedback with the speaker that came with the field kit. example, I'm using it to sing and modulate the delay time, which creates all kinds of weird tape-like pitch effects. the temperature sensor. This is the one I was most doubtful about, but it turns out you can do absolutely beautiful stuff with it. The cooling process on this creates some beautiful CV output. And by blowing on it, you can make it quiet. The ball switches. I wish I had known about these before. There's basically a little ball inside a switch that every time it makes a contact with one of the contacts inside the tiny box, it will set out a trigger. And that makes for some lovely, very natural playing.
Here I'm using it to step through the sequencer of the SEU2. The movement of the ball feels very natural and there's something playful about playing that way. Now let's move on to the digital stuff. First of all, the accelerometer. This has two modes. I sadly only explored the motorcycle mode because it sounded like the most fun for me and I missed out on the second mode which is a tap mode which should come in very handy. The motorcycle mode enables you to control control voltage as if you were riding a bike. As you can see, I was again using the ball switch to advance the sequencer and adjust the cutoff on the SAU2 using the accelerometer. The capacitive touch sensor. Now this is pretty amazing. It enables you to store four voltages and activate them via touch. You set the voltage you want for each of these touch plates, then you attach a crocodile cable and attach that to anything that is capacitive, meaning runs a current. So something like metal will work, but also fruits. I tried fruits, but only the grape would work really well and the difference to the others was too high. So I simply used the keys or the tines on this old toy piano. in the frequency shifter and adjusting its frequency as well as modulating the effects. Now let's move on to the big one, the random source. This is the module that I would like to have more than one of because it can do three things. First, it's a random source so it will send out random voltages that you can adjust in their speed using the knob and the range using the tiny buttons. Here I'm using it to great effect to generate rhythms and percussion. Random is all fine and dandy, but sometimes you want more control. So this doubles also as a 16 step step sequencer. You can dial in the value for each step and then program the next and the next and the next and the next and then you can run a lovely little sequence. This might be the world's tiniest sequencer. Here I'm using it to control the mighty drony pad in the background. The last mode on this is the Euclidean Rhythm Generator. It uses the Euclidean algorithm to create beats and pauses, which makes for some very natural grooves. C motor with it, which hits the spring reverb of the fifth kit effects to create the main thumping groove. I 
like this so much, I made two different tracks with it. In the second example, it does again percussion, and it does so brilliantly. Census should be out in January. I have no idea about prices or how the packs will be put together, so maybe you tweet Coma Electronic about what your ideas are about that. I hope you got inspired to try Census in your own music. It's a lovely way to get new ideas and to make the world talk to your synthesizers or other electronic devices. You don't even need a field kit for that. You can whip up something using Arduino and the sensor packs that are available for that platform. I don't have much idea though how to do that, so I can't help you any further. Now if you like the music from this video, I've made a 13 track album that you can get on my Bandcamp or my Patreon. The amazing Orca designed this beautiful piece of artwork. Check her out too in the description. So that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye! correction. The temperature board is actually digital, so this has to move over here. Sorry, Robert.